Hey, my name is Tucker Krause. Welcome back to my channel. And today's video, we're going to be looking at Petrobras. Yeah, I know it's been a bit. Petrobras trades with the ticker PBR. And it has a share price of $12.06, a market cap of about $80 billion, a very low PE ratio of 2.12. And obviously that dividend, I think that's why most people are interested in that stock. You can see it right there. Though I should note the preferred shares trade as PBR-A for a slight discount, allowing for higher dividend income. So roughly right now, at least as of April 15th, for every 100 shares of PBR, you get about 112 shares of PBRA. And so you're not necessarily going to miss out on any upside potential. But obviously, the main idea there is because you'll be getting whatever it is about $8 per share, you'll be getting, you know, eight times 12. I don't feel like doing that math right now, even if it's simple math. Yeah, you might think, hey, is this dividend really sustainable? Well, as of now, at least PBR is currently planning for that to be the case. As we can see in this tweet right here, PBR really did just telegraph today in the 20F that they they're keeping the 60% payout policy. So if PBR managed to make the same amount of money every single year for the next four years, that means that dividend is going to stay just as high as it is today. Not to mention, say, oil price, you know, climbs back up again because obviously it's fallen off a little bit. So, so far this year, again, they haven't released any results, but there's a good chance that their overall income, yes, is a little bit lower so far in 2023 than 2022. It'll still be a very, very large dividend. And so just to compare their revenue to oil price what a surprise the revenue and oil price is nearly identical 2020 it creators that's their lowest revenue 2015 falls off a cliff wouldn't you know they're an oil company and so yeah as i was mentioning earlier right 2022 very high 2021 increasing so chances are i wouldn't be surprised if our revenue number for this year ends up being closer to 2021 if oil doesn't resurge Free cash flow is where it's kind of interesting, though, is 2013-2014 oil was still doing pretty good, at least until, you know, the later half of 2014. It's still had negative free cash flow. But the reason for that is because operating cash flow from 2013 to 2020 was incredibly consistent around 26 billion US dollars, with the main difference being capital expenditures when it came to free cash flow. So pretty much it would be like, yeah, 2013 and 2015 had almost identical operating cash flow, but it's because they were doing a lot of capital expenditures in 2013. Though in 2021, it ballooned to 37 billion and in 2022 to 49 billion. And obviously we can see why. Now let's look at some management numbers here. So return on invested capital and return on equity are basically representative of management's effectiveness. And in both cases, very effective return on equity, well above the S&P 500 average and their return on invested capital, well above the weighted average cost of capital. And so the interest expense ratio and debt to earnings ratio are representative of their debt. And so interest expense ratio at 17.17 essentially means that their EBIT is about 17 times their interest expense. So that shows us they aren't just some zombie company that's sitting here drilling oil and, you know, just basically living to service their debt. Same thing with debt to earnings ratio. A one to one would indicate that their net income and long term debt is equal, though in this case, it's 0 0.72 because their net income is greater than their long term of debt. So essentially, if they really wanted to, they, you know, they wouldn't be crushed by their debt is the most important thing here. So overall, all these management numbers very quite strong. And here just a little bit more on the balance sheet. The quick ratio and current ratio are representative of current balance sheet strength. So the current ratio is essentially just current assets versus your current liability. In that case, they're one to one. Quick ratio takes a few things away from your current assets. 0 0.72. Ideally, it should be one to one or better. It's kind of different here with PBR. Just, you know, it depends on the type of company because it's going to be very different when you're looking at the quick ratio of, you know, maybe a Walmart. And then for debt ratio, that's essentially just representative of their debt encumbrance. And in here, it's quite strong because as we talked about earlier, their debt isn't necessarily overpowering. Now on to the DCF. So at their weighted average cost of capital, 9.43%. They have massive upside, massive upside, an 8% rate or 10% rate. Doesn't matter what you do, massive upside here. Now, it does seem a little bit ridiculous because we're just going to refer to that $72 fair value from here on. So a little bit over the top because this would give PBR a mark cap around the size of Exxon today, but not totally incomprehensible as this would only give PBR roughly a 12 PE ratio. And so to maybe look at something a little bit more realistic than Exxon has a 8.75 PE ratio and PBR has roughly a 2.15 PE ratio. So it would be roughly $50 if it had a PE ratio equal to Exxon. But of course, you know, 
like less jurisdictional risk for the most part with Exxon. So even if it's not exactly 8.75. So that's not to say rush out by the stock immediately because of course you should do your own research because this is not financial advice. This is just what I found myself. So this should have absolutely zero effect on your opinion of the stock. Do your own research. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.